All right, super excited to be joined by Josh Zamora, a infielder utility player for the Miami Marlins and their organization. Josh, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, you were on a podcast um, with a buddy of mine not too long ago. Things baseball, mm -hmm. beyond baseball. And he, I listened to it, and he had reached out to me and said, hey, you got to get Josh on. He has an awesome story. Uh, so I'm like, all right, yeah, definitely checked it out. I'm like, you have a really cool, really cool background, everything that you've gone through so far. Just get to pro ball where, where you are now and stuff. Right. Um, so what is the background? Like, your your where does your story start, Josh, in the, in the baseball side of things? Oh, boy, that starts when I was really young. Um, yeah. I mean, I've always loved the game of baseball, you know, mm -hmm. growing up, playing, you go through travel ball, play Little League first, travel ball, all that stuff. Uh, going through high school, I would say, was when I really fell in true love with the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you step on that field, and there's no other feeling than being between the two chalk lines. There really isn't. And it kind of goes back to, you know, the group of guys that I grew up playing with. Um, we all kind of went to the same high school, you know, and so I had that community of baseball that I could always, you know, fall back on. And all my friends have been from baseball. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit earlier, baseball is such a small world mm -hmm. that, you know, everything connects. Yeah. And so going through it, I mean, started, I'd say probably when I was really young. That's probably yeah. the best answer. Well, uh, talking about your high school, you went to El Toro, right? Correct. All right, so there has been so much talent that has come out of that high school. Uh, Chapman, Arenado, mm -hmm. um, Stephen uh, Vlines, he's a buddy of mine. He's in the Rangers organization now. Um, yep. Actually, the, yeah, the Rangers, he was with the Mets, now he's with the Rangers. Um, like So many guys, like how was it playing in a, in a city, in an area that's just like, it's like rich with talent? Yeah, you know, it was, it was really cool. So I, was, I wasn't actually supposed to go to El Toro. Okay. Um, I got two older brothers and they're both older. They went to a Tribuco, a neighboring high school, right? Mm -hmm. Technically the rival, if you want to get into that a little yeah. bit. And so high school choiced in uh, because of the baseball program, because of the coach and coach Mike Gonzalez. Um, awesome coach. You know, yeah, he knows the game and he has that history with his players. You know, he coached some of the, the best in the game today. So okay. I kind of, I wanted to be around that, you know, yeah, no, for sure. And like, are there just like urban legends of like things that Chapman and Arenado did when they're at that high school? Because I mean, like I said, two of the best at their position um, in all of baseball. Yeah. And, and Coach Gonzalez was a big fundamentals guy. You know, it's it's a big respect the game and play the game the right way. And so a lot of our practices, you know, there'd always be a bunning station. Mm -hmm. So bunning was always a, a core belief that you always had to, everyone knew how how to bunt, you know? Mm -hmm. And the the urban legend is, I believe it was 2008 when uh, they made the CIF run. And it was like, he tells a story, bottom six or something like that. Nolan comes up with runners on first and second. And instead of swinging away, he lays down a perfect drag button. Nice. You know, and that's, and it, whether it's true or not, I, I haven't looked into it too much. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it's something to get the guys like, oh, you know, well, if the best is doing it, then there's got to be something to it, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. I was thinking you're going to tell me he hit like a – he just launched a three-run home run or something, but <laughs> lay down a drag button, that's even that's even cooler just because, like like you said, he's one of the best to do it. And uh, just knowing the fundamentals just kind of shows the importance of, of working on every aspect um, of the game, especially a part of the game that's kind of like not really there anymore. Like no one really yep. thinks about everyone just like what the three true outcomes strike out walk or home run and stuff it's just it's yep. interesting to go back to the basics and the fundamentals of things yeah and it is it is cool you know going back for alumni games and i'm never gonna forget i was a, i was 14 year old freshman you know first alumni game and nolan comes out to hit bp right at the mm -hmm. honorary bp everyone kind of watches and really pays attention and he grabs this this metal beezer nike bat and i i he was smoking balls over the fence it was it was fun to watch yeah, that's. Have you ever had a chance to like sit down or talk to him or Chapman or even other guys who just gone through that before you? Uh, I've talked to Nolan a little bit, not too much. Um, okay. Just here and there, like he'd come out and take around balls with us and mm -hmm. stuff uh, back when I was in high school, which was cool. And you know, you get to ask him questions and stuff like that. Uh, Matt Chapman actually lives a couple streets away from me. Oh wow! And our parents are more our our family friends, 
Oh, that's and cool. So, yeah, it's like a small world, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'll see Matt around here and there and say hi to him, what's up, and, but nothing more than that. Just kind of what's up, you know? Yeah, and, and, and like I said, those two guys are some of the best. And as Matt, I, I grew up in A's fan, so seeing Matt yeah. uh, play for the Oakland was super cool. See him get traded was super heartbreaking, but I'm, I guess I'm kind of numb to that feeling now as an, <laughs> as an A's fan, just kind of knowing that most talent will get traded yeah. at, at yeah. some point. Um, who was maybe some of the local guys in your at, in your age group um, who are also went pro maybe? Because um, like I said, California just has so much talent when it comes to baseball. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, so I actually played with Chase Luttrell. Uh, okay. He went to El Toro. We played together. Um, and he actually got drafted by the Marlins this year as well. Oh, sick. Yeah, so that's probably the closest one. Um, in Orange County, I mean, there's there's a ton. You have, you know, Michael McGreevy. Um, who else? Blake Hunt, I believe, catching still. Um, ooh, thinking off the top of my head. Who else? Patrick Sandoval's one. Um, okay. yeah. Went to Mission Viejo. Faced him my freshman year. Hans Kraus, Dana Hills guy. Um, who else? It's, it's like I said. There's so much. There's so much. There's, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you do travel ball and all, the, all that kind of stuff too, or was it basically just oh, yeah. high school? Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was travel ball. Travel ball was during over the summers mainly, and yeah. then you know when you could work it out. But you know when I went through high school, I like to think of it. It was like the last year mm-hmm. of you have to play high school baseball. You mm-hmm. know, and and you don't want to miss fall games. You don't want to miss summer workouts or right. anything like that because you want to, you know, you want to play and Mm -hmm. in order to play, you got to put that, you got to put the work in and be there with your team so that they can trust you on the field, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. So at what point did you commit to, um, because you went to Reno, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, So at what what point did you commit to Reno? I want to say my, the end of my sophomore year of high school, maybe beginning of junior year. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I was right in the middle. That's crazy. So as a, as a junior going into, uh, but I'm sure like half this team was already committed at that point. Cause like I said, you guys had a stack, a stack team. Like, yeah. How cool was it just being like, all right, I'm already committed and I'm only a junior. Yeah. And it's funny you said that we had on that CIF team, we had 13, 14 commits, 14 Jeez. division one commits, I think. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy. It was wow. Crazy. That was a fun team. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. So like, what went into your recruitment progress or process? Because obviously um, you uh, went to Reno, but there's probably other schools that were interested in you. Like what kind of like how was that whole process for you and what kind of led you that direction? Yeah, you know, it was, it was cool uh, being recruited. I always tell people like guys that are going through high school now and join, mm-hmm. you know, because it's yeah. that's one of the few times where you'll get calls and, you know, it's all I want you here. I want you here. You know, and mm-hmm. you you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. And. For me, it was, it was a lot of phone calls. You know, I didn't get a ton of offers straight out of high school, mm-hmm. um, but it was a lot of phone calls, talking to some other schools and stuff, and um, some obstacles got in the way of, you know, some of that scholarship-wise. But um, other than that, when once uh, Jake Silverman called me, uh, he's coaching at University of Washington now, uh, he just called me, and as we talked, I kind of just knew that, you know, like I, I want to be – I want to play for this guy. Nice. And then I got got to school on my visit and, you know, met TJ Bruce, you know, awesome. Got it laid out. You know, this is what we're, this is what we do. This is what mm-hmm. we stand for. Um, if you're about it, let's do it. You know, yeah. if not, we'll see. That's so so it, was, cool. it was cool. Yeah. No. What other schools did you get to visit, though? So I only I only visited one other school okay. um, and it was Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Yeah. That's nice. that's the only other visit that I took. Okay, um, so what was how was your college experience? Because you obviously played the five years. I mean, my COVID year. I mean, I guess four full seasons. Oh yeah. Um, but how was your college experience here in Reno? I mean, I loved it. I love the city of Reno has has such a special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they call it the the biggest little city in the world, and it, it truly is. Like you can, there's all, all these little mom and pop restaurants, you know, and. Mm-hmm. And you have your chain restaurants, all that stuff, but there's restaurants that have been in Reno for years, you mm-hmm. know, and then there's history there. And 
the community aspect of it, especially around the baseball program. Yeah. And a lot of the other sports programs is it's, it's this tight knit group of we're going to do what we can to put ourselves in the best position athletically, you know, and it was cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Who, who was your favorite or what, what was your favorite like college to play? Like what was your favorite team to play against? Maybe uh, the fans were a little extra chirpy and you just wanted to really just, you know, show out for them. Yeah. I would, I would say going to Fresno state. Okay. That was cause you know, Fresno state with uh, coach Batesel over there, yeah. you know, he coaches them hard, coaches them well, and, and they know how to play baseball. You know, he, oh, yeah. he pumps out good ball players and walking Aaron in there. Judge, you know, heard of him. Say again. Aaron Judge, ever heard of him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, you, you're walking into this this stadium, and it's 102 out, super dry. And it's – you know that once you, you know, make the first – throw the first punch, they're mm-hmm. not going to back down. You know, they're yeah. going to come straight back after you. And you got to be ready to answer back too. And so mm-hmm. that's – I always enjoy playing Fresno State because there's always a – a spark you know in that series yeah. which which is it's always fun to play yeah were the fans pretty chippy there or no? oh yeah chippy? oh yeah. yeah oh yeah and they, they traveled well too when we played in oh, really they, they, their fan base would travel well well i guess i mean if it's it's not too far from like las vegas and like i mean you could probably make a whole like trip out of it if you know like like, like for example like the raiders like um everyone's like oh well the raiders you know they travel well because who doesn't want to go to las vegas or nevada yeah. just to catch a team and then there's so many other things you could do while you're there exactly exactly yeah. what is maybe one lesson you learned like at, at a at, from college because obviously you were there you said you were there five seasons four full seasons uh what was maybe your biggest takeaway uh, as a college player <sighs> biggest takeaway i mean i would my biggest takeaway would probably be not to take anything for granted yeah you know and it's 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 a pure feel a pure feeling to put on that uniform every day and be able to go out and compete and you know do it for the guy next to you and then he'll do it for the guy next to him too yeah and and when it all comes together you know you, you learn this lesson of of like lo- of loyalty and trust mm-hmm. you know of you know I, I trust that guy because I've seen him put in the work you know I've seen how he eats I've seen how disciplined he is I see you know, that he's accountable with himself and, you know, he spreads love to spreads love to others and always wants to help. And so I think I'll send, I'll central it down to this. My biggest takeaway is you're never too, no, I'm not gonna say it like that. You are, you just got to be a good guy. You know, it's not yeah. hard to be a good guy. And yeah. to, to me, that's doing everything the right way. You yeah. know, you, if you've got to take ground balls, go take ground balls. If you got to hit, go hit, lift, lift, eat, eat. You know, there's no shortcuts to greatness, as they say. Yeah. What was your favorite home run you hit? Or as soon as you hit it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Oregon State. We played at uh, the Aces Ballpark. And I hit it, and the light started strobing as I was running the bases. And everyone was on their feet. My parents were there, um, and it was just – it was, awesome. It was did you, awesome. Did you pimp it a little bit? I didn't, actually. I did not, which, yeah. I was, yeah, no, I didn't. Are you, are you, are you anti-pimping the home runs? Are you you're okay with that? What's, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I, I just – I haven't made it yet. You know, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really anyone that's – notable enough to pimp one you know like i haven't i haven't earned the ability to pimp it yet i don't know i mean i'm just looking at your stats in college like you were leading like we were one of the top players like (laughs) after your graduation to play there like offensively like i think you're a little bit in that environment you're i think you're somebody there josh (laughs) (laughs) yeah i appreciate that that's you know that goes back to the small net community of reno yeah felt super loved it was awesome yeah so obviously uh draft day comes and goes you don't get drafted um at any point after that whole like situation and scenario, like, did you sit think to yourself like maybe I'm I'm done with baseball? Uh, was that ever the thought in your head? Yeah, you know, when the draft ended, I was actually sitting on my stairs, and mm-hmm. it was just a blank stare. My parents didn't know what to say. You know, I didn't I didn't know what to think or say. And 
I called, I called one of my best friends, uh, Ben Purcell and just kind of talked to him. And I was like, dude, like, you know, I'm not done. I'm not done playing this game. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not, I know, that, I know that, you know, in God's plan, there's something out there for me, whether it's mm-hmm. playing now, whether it's getting back to it and working, you know, my butt off to get to where I want to be. Um, so that lapse, I, don't, I wouldn't say the lapse hit me of what's next, what's after baseball. Mm-hmm. It's more so kind of woke me up like a shock, like, oh, it could be taken away that fast. Yeah. So now it's, it's you wake up every day and you get after it. You know, there's, there's no shortcuts to where you want to be. Yeah. I was talking to somebody who um, actually he went, he was from Southern California as well. Um, he's drafted out of high school several years back by the Brewers and he was injured and out of baseball for two seasons. And I was talking to him. I said, what do you like? What do you, what's your biggest advice? He said, just appreciate every time you put cleats on dirt. Like you never know what is going to be taken away from him. And like prime example, like two years of his career gone from yep. just random injuries. And like, you just learn to appreciate every opportunity you get mm-hmm. to play the game. Cause I mean, like you said, it could be taken away so quickly from you. And that's, and that's how it goes. It's like, he, he said, appreciate every time you put your cleats on, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, the very first time my cleat touches the dirt every day and you hear that little crunch, you know, and I, I, I reach over and pick up a little handful of dirt kind of rubbing my hands. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Let's make the most of it. You know, I got, I got to, yeah. you're going you're to play baseball for such a short time in your life, whether it be 20 years, 25 years, 15, or even five years, mm-hmm. you know, and there's, there's no use in, in, not go waking up every day yeah. and being thankful that you get to play a child's game, you know, yeah. for, for your life. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you 100%. Um, so when, when did you get signed by the Marlins? Cause obviously you're with the Marlins now you're in pro ball. Um, how did that all come about? Like were other teams interested in you? Like, wh- like why did you choose the Marlins? Yeah. So I heard from a couple teams um, during the draft and then mm-hmm. obviously after the draft that didn't end up working out. Um, I signed in July. So I got a phone call at six in the morning, the day after the draft. Yeah. And I was, I was actually wasn't even awake yet. Um, just cause it was 9am East coast time, right? So 6am West yeah. coast time. And so I woke up kind of panicked. I'm not going to lie. I kind of panicked. I was like, Oh crap. I just missed the call, you know? Yeah. And called him back and we worked it out and that's kind of how it happened. That's so cool. That's so cool. Like, wait, was there any other teams that called you after that? Or you're just like, like, I mean, because no. obviously, I mean, the Marlins are they're a great organization. And like I said, I told you, like, I've had so many guys from that organization on the podcast. Like, I'm basically a Marlins guy now. <laughs> um, but and I, I'm not too far from Beloit. So if you ever get here to Beloit, um, hopefully, I mean, you jump to high A next year. But uh, yeah, dude, like, I'm definitely going to come watch you watch you play when you're out here in Beloit for sure. For sure. That'd be sweet. Yeah, for sure. So you you get sent that like after that whole process, that phone call. Like, how soon do they send you out to like instructs and or uh, rookie ball? Uh, the day after. Jeez. So I had plans. I had plans to go golfing in San Diego that day. So I got the call in the morning, and my dad looked at me. He goes, "All right, well, do you want to go golfing? Like, you got to pack and stuff." I was like, "No, <laughs> like we're gonna like this is this is the celebratory golf round, you know? Like, yeah. spend time with my 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 dad." And yeah. it was like. It was surreal. You know, that whole day was kind of like me and him. He used to throw me buckets on buckets of BP and his yeah. shoulders beat up. Yeah. And it was to, just to be out there with him. Well, that was very special, you know, and then yeah. rushed home, packed super quickly. Like three, eight, three to four hours of sleep, hopped on a plane and it started. Yeah. Wow. So what was your first like experience with like, did you go to you go into rookie ball, right? Correct. Yeah. So what was your first experience with rookie ball? Because obviously the minors is a whole different animal. Yeah. Yeah. My first experience, um, are you talking in game or like just, first just overall, just like overall base, like your just general minor league experience. So I walked into the clubhouse for the first time. Right. And the, the big change for me was the first group that I came up to, right. And just introduced what's up, how we doing? Yeah didn't speak a lick of English all from like Dominican and stuff. Oh yeah. And so I was like, all right, well, this is, this is, this is going to be fun. You know, it's going to be a challenge, yep. but that, that's when I learned 
that baseball is such a universal language. Yeah. You know, like that, that's how you communicate, you communicate through the game. And I, I think and that's awesome. Yeah. And those guys are throwing like triple digits too, which is oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's awesome. So then um, like overall, like looking back after your, your first, you know, I guess half, did you, I guess the half the season, cause you were drafted um, middle of the summer and stuff. Yeah. Um, like how was that total overall experience for you then just being able to say that, you know, you finished your, your first professional season in, in baseball. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was a good feeling. Yeah. It's uh, you always kind of dream of it as a kid. Like, Oh, what the heck? like, Oh, you know, I want to, I want to be a major league baseball player one day. Right. Uh -huh. And you, you get out there and you know, you wear, put on a Marlins Jersey and it's look in the mirror. You're like, wow. Like now the work begins, you know, now it's, yeah. it's not, I've made it. It's, it's what's next. You yeah. know, and it's, it's, uh, I, I just, I appreciate it and I'm thankful for it. You know, I thank God every day that I get to wake up and play baseball for a living. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Yeah. So, so how's your off season been then? Cause obviously this is your first like official off season, um, heading into like pro ball. Right. Um, like, what are you doing to like, oh, you're in Sacramento now. Obviously you moved down there. Um, staying dry. <laughs> yeah trying to <laughs> as dry as you can but like how has the offseason been it's been great it's been great um moved up here with one of my best friends owen sharks uh, he's a pitcher in the pirates organization um we work out at a facility called optimum athletes okay run by ryan matthews um and so we just you know we work on our train in the mornings and then kind of hang out kick it go to work do that kind of thing in the afternoon mm -hmm. Uh, but being around this atmosphere of a bunch of different pro guys and, you know, learning the game, learning the intangibles of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's been the the best part about it. Yeah, but it's cool to be, to be surrounded by guys with the same mission, you know? Yeah. So when do you fly to Florida? I haven't gotten a report date yet. Okay. Yeah. And I said, my, my goal is to get out there uh, either end of February, early March. Um, for sure, I'll be at Marlins hanging around that area because yeah. like i said i talked to a ton of guys already got plans to hang out with a couple of them uh, so if, if i see you around josh for sure i'm gonna holler at you uh, when do. you're not yeah no for sure like it's, it's already a done thing like yeah. like you said i'm a marlins guy like yes sir <laughs> like, up, baby. yeah that's right that's right so when you're not pitching you're not working out like what do you do for fun you mentioned golfing like in just ton of golf spots in california yeah well, yeah we all golf here and there you know off days days i can get out and golf mm -hmm. um other than that, just kind of stay home. Uh, I enjoy cooking. So, like, if I, I'll oh, dive okay. into a meal and make something very good. Um, movies, what kind of, TV shows. What kind, of food you, what kind of food do you like to cook? Very like, what's, standard. What's your go-to? Like, like this, is like, this is, like, the winner. Like, I know this is going to crush it. Chicken. Or, no, it's pork. Pork chops, yeah. rice, and vegetables. Pork chops, rice, and broccoli normally. Broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Okay. And you balsamic vinaigrette, Brussels yeah. sprouts. You know, marinate the pork, and it's oof. It's money. Man, I'm hungry already. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about that. Uh, you mentioned movies and stuff. Um, do you do you play? Do you Call of Duty or? Oh yeah. Xbox? Okay. Oh yeah, Warzone guy. Okay. Have you? Do, what about? Do you like? Do you like the new one? The new uh, Call of Duty or no? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not All bad. Right. I enjoy playing it. I war. I I liked. I think I just because I got used to the old map. Yeah. And it, yeah, you gotta learn everything. Adjustment, yeah. Like I knew where to go. I knew like, but now it's that whole adjustment period of like le relearning uh, a new map. I was like, all right, I don't know. I got into Fortnite again. I've been grinding that for a while. Um, <laughs> which is, <laughs> ever since I got rid of like the building, like I'm like, yeah. I'm like I, I can get back in there and just dominate. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got you. I it's got. You. Never, I was never a good builder either. Nah, but like I can, I can shoot. <laughs> yeah, but. No, for sure. Well, hey, I mean, we'll have to squat us sometime in Warzone. Um, I know sure. you'll be keeping busy heading out to Florida soon and stuff, but like, do you are you Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. I don't, I don't hold it against you and all that, but uh... Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, they got crossplay. It's all good. Well, anyway, Josh. Hey, I want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate you taking the time to chop it up a little bit. Um, hopefully, I see you in Florida. I for sure I'm going to see you in Beloit, um, yep. and we'll have to chop it up again. That sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You got it, brother. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You as well.